Well, good morning, everyone. Wayne Hathaway with you here on Some Good Seeds on this Friday morning. Great to have you with me. A little different setting in the background there. Uh, we are currently in Olympia, Washington, well, more specifically, Lacey, uh, with our friends Dan and Anita Seacrest. Uh, the occasion for this is that we are having our uh, 60s college reunion here. A uh, number of people meeting here tomorrow for a time of fellowship and sharing together. These are all people that went to Northwest College University now uh, during the 60s. And uh, every year for the last number of years, we have uh, met as a class or as classmates to share together and fellowship, lots and lots of singing and testimonies of the goodness and the grace of God. And so that's uh, that's where I'm at today. And I want to share from our reading Habakkuk chapter 1, 2, and 3 and John 8, uh, some verses that are really, really good and special verses for us today on uh, this uh, Friday morning. So a word of encouragement, I think, for each and every one of us. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, 18, and 19 reads, Though the fig tree does not blossom, and the fruit be no, there, there be no fruit on the vines, though the labor or the produce of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the herd, and there be no herd in the stall, yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on high hills. That's a great song. Uh, early, many, many years ago, someone put that uh, to, to, to music, and it's a great little chorus of singing the word of God. Uh, but I, I like the idea of that Though there is difficulty, Habakkuk is saying, though there is all this heartache, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Not in my circumstance, not saying, oh boy, this is wonderful. But the idea is that is my, my joy, my rejoicing comes from the knowledge of the presence of God in my life. And that's, that's our cause for rejoicing today. And uh, it, I think what we have to do is pause, we stop, take stock in the reality of who Jesus is, what God has done in our lives, that gives us cause for rejoicing. Uh, circumstances may be difficult. I mean, what the thing that he described here, there, uh, the fig tree isn't blossom. That means there's not going to be any figs, no fruit on the vine. The grapes aren't producing. Uh, the, the olive tree is not producing the olives where they get the oil from. Uh, the flock cut off from the herd. Uh, the, the problem with the herd. Uh, uh, all of these things. It's, it's like, uh, oh, like Jacob said one time, oh, everything is against me. And that's kind of where Habakkuk is in this instant. Everything seems to be against him. And so he is having a hard time. But then this little three-letter word, yet, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. And so that's where we we need to be each and every day, re rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, and, and I like the word there, joy, uh, because it, it's a word in the Hebrew that means to jump, spin, and twirl. Uh, rejoice. So it's not just, oh, hallelujah, everything is fine. No, it's it's real joy. It's real rejoicing. It, it is making merry in our heart. Because why? Because of the goodness of God. And that's the thing that we have to focus on. It's God's goodness and what he has done for us. So praise the Lord for that. I pray your Friday. Uh, end of the week for us, maybe for those who are on a work week. Uh, but rejoice in the Lord because of his abundant goodness to us today. He is faithful, he is good, and he is going to see us through this time, even though it may be difficult, though there are all these uh, shortages on every hand, which, you know, that may become a reality before too terribly long, but we can still rejoice in the Lord and have our hope in him. So may the Lord richly bless you today, I pray, as you rejoice in the Lord. On what did Paul say? I will say it again, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Rejoice in him today.